We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. We're the three best friends that fantasy football could have. And we'll never, ever, ever, ever leave each other. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Wolfpack Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm your host, Dylan Clemens. Here with me, as always, are my two co-hosts and two best friends, Mike LaPlante and Mike Bonney. What's going on, my what dudes? What up? Hey, man. Uh, guys, so we're recording a day early, so we got no uh, Thursday night football game to recap, so we're going to do a little something different. We're going to do a buy low, sell high wow, we watch instead. Thursday night game. Yes, sir. Um, but first, let's let everybody know the bye weeks this week. Uh, the Washington football team are on a bye. Arizona Cardinals, Jacksonville Jaguars, and the Houston Texans. <clears throat> but uh, you guys want to ju- just jump right into the buy sell? You betcha. People want to know who to buy right. and who to sell. All right, LaPlante. You're a talker. <laughs> let's let's uh let's start with you. What uh, do you got for the uh, player to Good sell? thing you started with me because we're gonna start with a great uh, sell high in Todd Gurley. Uh, he's got a great matchup this week uh, against the Panthers. He last time he faced him, he had 14 carries, 121 yards, and a touchdown. Right now, he's tied in the league uh, for first for touchdowns for running backs with Cook and Henry with seven. And he's just not receiving the same amount of volume as those guys. So those touchdowns are not sustainable. Uh, only 13 receptions through seven games, and they've all been negative game scripts. I mean, he's just not involved in the passing game. Sell him I now. Agree. Yeah, Brian Hill's getting more and more. Yeah, involved. even tonight it, it looks like. like he's getting some. Agreed. Ooh. Ike, uh, why don't you give us our guy? Our, <laughs> why don't you give us your guy? I'm going to go with an easy one, and it's Antonio Brown. He has not, Mr. Big Chest. He has not played a game yet, but there will be someone in your league that falls in love with him or falls in love with the name, the guy throwing him the ball. So you could probably get a decently high name guy for him too. I would assume. If you have my team, start shopping him around. I think. Yeah, I mean, shop his potential for sure. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is going into the blue medical tent, guys. That's not what you like to see. No, not good. How about you, Dylan? Uh, who's your player to sell high? Uh, I got Chase Edmonds. Uh, he's looked good in opportunity in the limited opportunity he's got. He's averaging six point yards attempt, guys. That's pretty pretty ridiculous. Uh, obviously, Drake went down with an injury last week. It's a slight tear to ligament around his ankle, so he should be out two to three weeks, mm-hmm. but. It's similar to a high ankle sprain, so you you know how that works. Sometimes it might be closer to six weeks. But uh, if you try to sell him and you could find yourself a wide receiver two to a wide receiver three for him, I would honestly do that. You guys agree with me or no? Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah, that's another guy like uh, Tony Brown. You could definitely cash in on this potential. By the way, P.J. Walker is the quarterback right now for the Panthers. Wasn't oh, he man. the one in uh, XFL. XFL? Yeah, dude. Yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah it was I wrote XFL about him in our team previews for the beginning of the year. That's cool. I like that. <laughs> but uh, stayed on track, guys. Let's. Uh, we each gave you a sell. Now let's uh, give us a buy. We'll plan. All right. Uh, I'm going to be buying low. It's not the sexiest name, but David Montgomery. Uh, ever since Tariq Cohen's uh, injury. He's been third on the team in snap percentage behind Robinson and Graham with 67% of the team snaps. I mean, that's a significant amount for uh, a running back. I know he's not been efficient, but he's also been involved in the passing game. He's third on the team in the reception in receptions behind again, Robinson and Graham with 20 on the year. And he's had four straight weeks since Cohen's been down of five plus targets. He's got 19 receptions in those four weeks. I mean, he's averaging 14 rushing attempts a game. I mean, he's, he's not sexy. He's kind of like the Jamison Crowder of this offense where it's not good, but he's not bad. So you might, you might be able to get him cheap. I like David Montgomery as a fantasy player. You, you said it perfect. It's you're never going to be excited to play him. But as long as he keeps getting five plus targets and you know 
12, 10, 12, 15 carries around there. It's a solid floor, and he's a and, good player. And being a running back, the number one running back in offense, you always have the chance of just falling into the end zone. And if he does that, he's going to boom. You don't consider Cordero Patterson the number one <laughs> back? <laughs> I think Matt Nagy. I'm pretty uh, sure Ryan Nall's listed higher sometimes. on the depth chart than him. <laughs> uh, Ike, who do you got, man? I'm going to go with A.J. Green. Right now he is no wide there. receiver 53. <laughs> but Sorry, he is I'd second. Buy I'd buy him over T.Y. Hilton right now. <laughs> he is second on the team in team target percentage with 19.7. In the last two games, he's averaging 12 targets, seven and a half catches for 89 yards. Good enough for wide receiver 23. So, I mean, since he's starting to catch the ball more, get his catch rate up, I think he's wide receiver two, wide receiver three for the rest of the year for sure. Yeah, they uh, they yeah, absolutely would... changed his role in that offense. Now that he's gotten older, they're not really sending him deep anymore. He's the underneath kind of guy, you know, the safety valve since the tight end got injured for Burrow. And I want part of this throwing offense in fantasy for oh, sure. Oh, hell yeah. Joe Burrow's like, you get a target. You get a target. You get a target. Except for Joe Mixon. You get a target. Yeah, this is like the the less efficient Seahawks offense with more volume. Sure, yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Uh, but then the the last uh, buy is my guy, Hollywood Brown. I've been preaching for him all season. But – uh. He's got – guys, he actually has at least six targets in every game. I kind of thought that was wild with him. That's good. Being, it it is last good. year. Um, but I really like his schedule going forward. It's a For very sure. soft schedule. Yeah, he's got a good uh, fantasy playoff schedule. Uh, uh, Sorry, guys. I was hoping you were going to stall a little. Well, I, I, I didn't have his stats pulled up. I got his mat, uh, his schedule right here. That's what I was wanting. Yeah, and <laughs> after week 12, when he plays Pittsburgh, because that's going to be his last tough matchup, he plays Dallas week 13, Cleveland week 14, Jacksonville week 15, Giants week 16. That's primo matchups. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's real good. Yeah, so uh, I'm a big fan. And eventually, the big plays will come. They have to. All right. uh, I just got to interject because, I mean, it's kind of breaking news with Thursday Night Football going on. Riley, uh, uh, Riley, Calvin Ridley (laughs) went down with an ankle injury. Uh, He's been ruled out for the rest of the game. Uh, Hopefully, it's not too serious. Seen him walking around on the sideline, but. You never like to see a wide receiver like him go down. Another injury is Teddy that Bridgewater. Shot, yeah, and that shot to Teddy didn't look good. He was is he uh, still out? Going down for a yeah, he was going down for well. Atlanta's got the ball right now, but he was going down on a sack, and guy came in late and kind of hit him and bent his neck. Yeah, it didn't look great. Uh, nah, not a good start no. to the week. Nope. But uh, I say we could jump into the rest of the game preview. Yes, sir. What's the first game of the week here, Dill? Pittsburgh Steelers at the Baltimore Ravens. Once again, we did this shit last week. We're starting with pretty much the game of the week. Yeah, right? Yeah, the only undefeated team left the Steelers against the offensive, well, juggernaut last year, the Baltimore Ravens. I'm excited to see this game. But uh, Big Ben, he's got he's struggling a little bit, guys. Under 20 fantasy points in two straight games. Only two out of seven times he hit 20-plus fantasy points this season. Seems to be a run for his team. Have... Yeah. It, it, yeah, with Connor staying healthy, you, they're definitely using him as the oh, workhorse, yeah. and they want to control the game and use the that good defense. Yep. That they yeah, they're have. not having Big Ben throw it an obscene amount of times unless they're down, which they really haven't been down. <clears throat> Um, that so are you guys? You guys sitting him? I'd be avoiding him, yeah. Especially with this matchup against the Ravens. Yes. Divisional matchup too. Ah oh, man, I might be a defensive slugfest. Yeah, they might. It, yeah, I agree. Like it might just be kind of a ground and pound game, and you know how Baltimore likes to just kind of yep. grind it out on the ground. Yeah, hey, talking about that ground and pound. I mean, James Conner this week. You're obviously starting him, but I mean, yes. 
I don't think you're you're liking this matchup because this Ravens uh, defense is <laughs> no joke. I mean, he, yes, he's I'm getting still the starting him. Yeah, you still start him. He's getting the volume. He's with got in the end zone at least once. You think his carries yeah. are his touches are there? Yeah, he's getting twenty carries in the last two games. I mean, five out of the last six games, he's had fifteen plus fantasy points. Just temper your expectations against this studly Ravens defense. Uh, let's jump over to the wide receivers. Deontay Johnson, guys, if he's uh, if he's healthy, you got to start him. He's averaged 13 targets this season. Yeah, it's completely hard. took over Juju Smith-Schuster's spot as number one. It's weird. Yeah. Yes, I mean, it does did. it does help his average that he hasn't been healthy maintaining those 13 targets a game. For sure. But, yeah, you start him if he's – I like him more than Juju this week. Well, do you have a higher – are you more confident in Juju after he showed you guys a little bit last not week? Not this week. No. not change your opinion on No, nah, I mean – Ravens haven't allowed a touchdown to the slot, and that's literally all Juju does. So, I mean, it's going to be tough for him. Well, that's where that's where they're playing Marlon yeah. Humphrey a lot, right? Doesn't yeah. he play yeah. a lot in the slot? So, that's uh-uh. not a good matchup for Juju. I, I, I agree. I, if you could throw Juju on your bench, if you got a better option, I would. I'd uh, do it. Probably there might, so. There's going to be some names later, farther down, that we could probably say that would be better than like Cole Beasley. Uh, against New England's defense, I'd rather have that matchup. But I, I, another person we're probably benching this week is Chase Claypool in this matchup because he, he's definitely one of those matchup dependent guys. He's not getting that. Same amount of volume as Deontay. Uh, two games. If Deontay's in a row. out. Maybe you can throw him in there, and it'd be super risky. But see, guys. But the problem that I have with that, I don't have snap shares up. But uh, it seemed to me last week that Claypool took over James. He did. Washington's yeah, James spot, Washington right? is droppable. Now. And. There, there were we, there were weeks where James Robinson was pr- producing along with Deontay Johnson. That's so true. I think at times Clay, Claypool will be able to do it. Unfortunately, it's going to be too boomer bust. Count on it, every and week. this is not yeah. the week to test it out. Yeah, Claypool's been uh, out on the team snaps for fifty nine percent of the time, uh, and then you got Deontay Johnson at thirty eight. That's probably because of the health issues. But I mean. Believe it or not, Juju is in there seventy eight percent of the time. Let me ask you guys, since we jump back to Juju, would you rather start Juju Smith Schuster against Baltimore or Darius Slayton against Tampa Bay? Juju. Yeah, Juju. Better quarterback play. Now that Sterling's there, I would go Juju. That is well. Juju Smith Schuster or Ike's boy AJ Green. AJ, AJ Green against Tennessee. Nice, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> That's got shootout potential there. <laughs> Okay, this this is more of an interesting one. Juju Smith Schuster, Rashard Ooh. Higgins against Vegas. against who? Vegas. Vegas. Honestly, we'll get it. We'll obviously get into Rashard Higgins when we get to. Can we bring that Juju up when game. we get to Higgins? My answer is Juju. <laughs> sure, I'll bring it back to you right. when we get to that game. Uh, tight end. Uh, what do you guys think? Of Gotta start him. This week? I'm sorry you don't like it, but you have to start him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, three out of the last four games with six plus targets. That's pretty good. I just don't understand. You have Deontay Johnson. You have Chase Claypool. You have James Conner to throw the ball to. You have Juju. Why is Ebron? I have no start? idea. It just doesn't make sense. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. And with the buys of Logan Thomas being out, you got Darren Fells being out with the Texans and tight ends just being a, a shithole this year, unless you have Kittle, Kelsey, Darren Waller, or, you know, them. Right. He, he's seeing a decent amount of volume to where he can get that, that, that solid 10 points a game for you at tight yeah, end. Yeah, get the 10 points. That's all you're looking for. A 10-point game from a tight end is a win in my book. Agreed. Start him this week, but I hate it. Um, jumping over the Ravens, quarterback Lamar Jackson. I like him this week. Pittsburgh's defense is beatable. Um, unfortunately, he struggled a little bit. Only three games with 20-plus fantasy points this year. Are you guys running running Lamar out there? Yeah. Oh, man. You, you probably invested an early pick at him to where yeah. you're, you're forced to throw him out there every week. It's Unless not going to be this – the safest play because 
it's a uh, the, these two teams always have a defensive battle, so it'll be interesting for sure. I mean, he's beaten him both times. He's played him, I believe. I mean, he knows his defense, and like you said, the past he is beatable. It's just I don't see him having a high rushing floor this week. Den Bush is out. Yeah, so I wonder who's going to be chasing TJ Watt. I wonder who's going to be Shadow on the mm. <laughs> Maybe. That'd be scary. He's <laughs> blowing him up. Uh, the running backs. We could run through the running backs quick, right? Do I do want to mention. Uh, I mean, Mark Mark Ingram. I do want to mention. I don't think so. J.K. Dobbins might actually see double dig- digit carries this game because. If it's a running game like I think it is, they're gonna get want to get him involved. And with Mark Ingram now pretty much non-existent, he might not be a bad guy to pick up or buy. Super low. I just hate. I just. Hate I know. Gus is just too much. If he goes that. down or is inefficient, it should be J.K. Dobbins' job all day. I agree. But yeah, avoid I him agree. all right now. Uh, then. The wide receivers, uh, I already talked about Marquise Brown at the top of the, the show. Six games is six plus targets, um, three games with 12 plus fantasy points. I also like his matchup this week, guys. I Joe Hayden's pretty much going to be covered. He's old and slow. You really think old man <laughs> Joe Hayden can? I think we could see a big Brown? touchdown this week. That's what. I know because they can happen. Week, but, it's weird. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's dependent on Lamar. He's yeah. been he's been airmailing him a lot this year. This, uh, let's jump to the. Well, we really can't trust any of the other wide receivers in this offense, right? No, Besides because Marquise Mark Brown, he's the number two option in this offense. The number one option is Mark Andrews. Uh, hold on, before we jump to Mark Andrews, should we mention the wide receiver who? Uh, Signed this week, Des Mr. Bryant. Mr. X himself throwing up one handers. In yeah, practice. Des, Br- your kicker, uh, young, yeah, I know, and that's just about it. missed the field goal. <laughs> uh, point, yeah, it was the extra point, right? 25 17 Atlanta lead in right now, seven minutes left in the fourth. Um, LaPlante, what do you think of Mark Andrews in this game? Uh, I like him. I mean, he's still the number one option on this team, like I said. His snap percentage is uh, a little bit down this year, which is kind of surprising. I think that's just attributed to Marquise Brown. They Brock. must like Nick Boyle. And that, too. I, I think they've been just running less two tight end sets. And go ahead. He is definitely you, not the blocker. You th- no, you he's think, not. You think, Mi- you think Minka shadows him or no? Like you said with Joe Hayden not being able to cover Marquise Brown, I wouldn't be surprised if they if they <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah they that's true. Over the top there. there, so I, Mark Andrews might have the middle of the field all all day to work with. I could see a big game from him possibly. Sure, sure. Yeah, three out of the last but six like games said, for him has gotten ten uh, plus points, and that's our magic number for tight ends. And he's obviously a start because he's Mark Andrews too. So, uh, let's jump to the next game. Keep it rolling here. The five and two Los Angeles Rams against the three and three Miami Dolphins. Quarterback Jared Goff, thirty plus pass attempts in six out of his last seven games. Five out of seven games with multi touchdowns. Five games with fifteen plus fantasy points. You like this matchup for him, guys? Or are you? Tr- I'd be starting him. I, yeah. I I have a weird feeling this game might turn into like a shootout because I feel like Tua's going to want to show what he's got. At least that's what I'm hoping to see. I want to see Tua sling the ball, I guess. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Surprisingly, Miami is 10th in the uh, league in fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks. Wow. Yeah, their uh, their secondary is now healthy with Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. I mean – I just love the fact that Goff has been just throwing the hell out of the ball. It is kind of He crazy. has been throwing the hell out of the ball, but, I mean, this this offense is mainly priori- prioritizing running the ball. So, good segue, LaPlante. What Daryl Henderson, two straight games with under 10 fantasy points, struggling a little bit. 
Um, 50% snap percentage, pretty much splitting it with Malcolm Brown and Cam Akers gets about two, three snaps a game. He's, uh, guys, if you have it done, yeah, already, he not, he, not in dynasty, but in redraft and stuff like that, he's pretty much useless right now. Barring an injury. Yeah. It's pro. I mean, McVay didn't like to use Daryl Henderson that's true. as a rookie. Yeah, so maybe it's around the same thing. So maybe that's why he – I don't like any of the running backs in this offense. Yeah, I, just, I just don't trust Sean McVay, let's be honest. <laughs> With all the Jets. Yeah, things, even Woods, Woods carries the ball like three times. Walter and carries yeah. and shit too. Yeah. <laughs> he even fumbles at times too like we saw on Monday night. Uh, well, let's uh, – jump over to the wide receivers now. Robert Woods, Cooper Cup, and for some reason, Josh Reynolds had a bunch of targets. <laughs> Why the deep target specialist on the team for some reason. <laughs> Why not? But guys, Robert Woods has kind of disappointed me this year. He's been saved by some touchdowns this season, his fantasy weeks, and uh, he's had six or lower targets in four out of seven games. What are we doing with Bobby Trees? Starting him, but it's obviously reluctantly. Yeah, you, you're not getting the same amount of value that you got when you drafted him. You are hoping he'd be a low-end wide receiver. He's not getting one. enough targets. He's more of a wide receiver three type with the amount of targets he's getting. Yeah, he really is. And I thought he would uh, – I loved him coming into the season. That's your Bobby Trees. For some reason. Uh, what do you think of Cooper Cup, though? He's been better than I anticipated. Six-plus targets at each of the last Yeah, he seems games. to be taking over as the number one wide receiver in the offense. Yeah, he's he's kind of grown more into the role of the number one receiver. But, you know, last year, I, he, was, last year he was very touchdown dependent. And, and the year before that, like this year, he's getting the volume to make him have a, a very, you know, solid floor instead of being that high-ceiling receiver that he's been in previous years. Do you, do you happen to have his red zone target share up with plan or no? I'm just curious to what it was compared to last year because I feel like they used him a lot in the red zone last year. Who, Cooper Cup? It's not the same. It's nowhere near the same. Yeah. I guess maybe that's just McVay always. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, around. he only or Cooper Cup only has two or three end zone targets the past few games. Yeah. Give me a second. Oof. Yeah, that's he's, not he's, ideal. He's but only, while you're looking that up, Laplan, he's got uh, four Mike. red zone okay. uh, targets on the year. Oof. Yeah, and and out of those four targets, he's only got one reception. Damn. <laughs> And last year, he had, like, what, 10, 10 yeah, touchdowns? I do remember seeing him two weeks ago. He did drop it. He did drop yeah. a touchdown, too, in the corner of the end. Yeah, they've been like using idiot. more of Bobby Trees in the red zone. It's just he hasn't been getting the touchdowns either. He's only got one touchdown in the red zone. Uh, then let's jump into the tight ends, guys. Tyler Higby, boy, what a disappointment he's been. And he was banged up I don't this want week him. And, or I don't last week and didn't play. I want no piece of him. No. What about Gerald Everett, though? He had four targets in each of his last three games. Uh, he made my tight ends. I he's nothing Arnold more than a streamer. Avoiding. Nothing more than a streamer. If you if you got a bye week uh, or a terrible matchup. I'd still go Higby over Everett for right now. Although that's bound to change, I feel like, in the next few weeks. Sure. Uh, let's jump into the Dolphins, though, guys. Has anybody got a watch on? Is it's anybody two a time. It it's <laughs> two a time. <laughs> two a tongue of law, guys. It's, he's finally starting. I'm pretty jazzed about like it. I am? I have no idea what's going to happen. You're jazzed? I'm jacked, man. This is awesome. I'm jazzed. Put on some smooth jazz. That's how I'm feeling. <laughs> we'll get to Kenny Galladay later. <laughs> but, yeah, guys, unfortunately, we just don't know what we're going to get. So, unfortunately, for now, you have to avoid yeah. starting him. Unless you're feeling risky, which uh, uh, you're just wild then. Yeah, <laughs> you're feeling risky against this. Uh, you got to be 6-0 then with, like, the best team unimaginable. 
the the Dolphins O line is not the greatest. I see Aaron, Aaron Donald ate the O line for the Bears up. He's going to eat the O line for the Dolphins up. And then you got Jalen Ramsey probably going to be matched up on Devontae Parker. Yeah, it's it's, it's gonna be looking, fun. It's looking. Go ahead. What? Well, I was going to ask you. What are you guys thinking of the? Pa- are right, you think that all the pass catchers are going to be downgraded since Vince all of them except in? for Gasicki? Or what are you guys leaning towards? You think they're going to be better? I think Gasicki's value goes up, and Devontae sure Parker so, kind man. of stays <laughs> where he's at, maybe slightly lower, but the rest of them, Preston Williams and stuff like that, down. I Miles think, Gaskin up for a pass catcher too. I I, I think Gaskin is going to definitely gain some value. I think he's going to get even more carries. They might try to. Oh, definitely. I was just going to say that, LaPlante. Uh, he's had 15 carries in the last two games and four-plus targets in every game. And with them having yep. a rookie quarterback, they're going to want to try. He's turned out to be a good player. a little bit on the ground, at least at the beginning. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Um, Parker this week, uh, we already touched on him. Devontae Parker this week, he's uh, questionable with a groin. He's a uh, risky start, oh, especially yeah. going against Jalen <laughs> Ramsey. Jalen Ramsey is one of the top three cornerbacks in the league, if not the best. You, you definitely temper your expectations, whoever he's matched up against. And then Preston Williams, you mm-hmm. kind of want to avoid as well. He's had only 14 targets in his last four games. He's really – I mean, he – he catches the touchdowns, it seems like, in this offense, but I no, it's just not. You can't dependent. count on that every week. But I mean, I, I think I'm starting Mike Jacecki this week, though. I think I agree. I with would Mike. be. He he struggled last week, but so you, but you guys are still comfortable throwing mm-hmm. two weeks ago, yeah. right? Did they have a bye last week? Two weeks. He's ago, only he had, had two games thing, with ten plus fantasy points, and that's not good. Uh, but yeah. <laughs> Very boomer bust. Very boomer bust. My my thoughts are off of Joe Burrow. When Joe Burrow started uh, another rookie this year, who did he throw to all the time? The tight end for the uh, first few games, yeah. Sure. Yeah, the rookie. The rookies just they look at the tight ends as a safety valve, and he Rams might look aren't great against the tight end either. So it could be a good yeah, game for Gasicki. Yeah, it's the easiest throw on the field, so that makes sense for rookies. Um. Jump to the next game, though. Oh, oh boy. seven New York Jets at the six and one Kansas City Chiefs. I see it at some point, guys. This line for this game <laughs> Kansas City was favored by like twenty two points. <laughs> Sam Darnold, I got no stats to show you guys because no, uh, <laughs> you don't. You don't want to play. I do want to tell. We don't normally touch a talk a whole lot about the, the Jets, but I do want to touch on one thing, and that's the backfield. What are you guys thinking about Lamar? As of right Ryan? now, I would avoid him because it's the Chiefs, but taking over the backfield, which is good news because Frank Gore isn't getting it done. It's got to be the best thing that Gase has done is actually yeah, turning for sure. that over to <laughs> Um, yeah. to P Ryan. He needs to do it more. P. I Ryan agree. Needs to get about I agree. 80% of the. I'm not the even going to credit that to Gase because he gave over what is the it play doing? calling. So he, he probably gave over the starting lineup, <laughs> too. Fair enough. Uh, Jameson Crowder, guys, he's a start if he's playing, but he can't stay healthy. Uh, Denzel Mims came back last week. He uh, he looked okay. He had seven targets, which is. Yeah, I think, that was, of, I think that was yards. part of because Crowder was out. I. Sure. I think he, Crowder's going to eat into him a little bit. For sure. Um, stay away Shame. from Chris Hernan because he's. Shame they don't use him. He jump, doesn't stink. Jump it over. Gaze to... just, Adam Gase is like, you know what? I don't uh, know. Man. I don't know. It. <laughs> just no. <laughs> no, Adam Gase stinks. I've seen a couple times I've seen him this year. I've seen a couple balls hit his hand. Honestly, I don't even think they've it called his name the once. So, uh... <laughs> <laughs> not a fan but jumping over to the Chiefs guys Patrick Mahomes stud must start the only thing that scares me is that they're going to get ahead like and then 31 just run to the ball. nothing at halftime and then he doesn't even I think there's a better chance they're, they're up 31 to nothing half. after the first quarter that'd be funny <laughs> yeah this uh, could get could get ugly um, the running backs 
it was the first week with Le'Veon Bell in the game alongside Clyde Edwards Elaire. He uh he hit uh, CEH obviously had his lowest snap percentage. That was probably attributed touches. to that snow game in Denver also. They really didn't have to do much with uh the defense he, scoring uh pick six and then Byron Pringle taking a one oh two yard uh putt uh kickoff, I think it was. To the He's how? still rushing the ball so well, though. He's top yep. five in the league, man. He is. And he, yeah. he, he finally yeah. got in the end zone last week, too, right? <laughs> and then dropped another end zone. So his week could have er, a, a, a touchdown. I think so with how you said they're going to go good. up big early. I, Clyde Edwards, Hilaire, and Le'Veon Bell, I think, are both decent options to start. Revenge but, game for Le'Veon. Should Le'Veon see more Bell, touches. Revenge this is game. the game yep. he wanted yep. to play against the Jets. I could see Andy Reid giving him some touches. Revenge. Yeah, yes. they're going to want again. Yeah, Le'Veon Bell strikes me as the guy who holds a grudge. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> uh, besides Tyreek Hill. I, I, hate, I hate saying this, but uh, you're starting Tyreek Hill this week just, just because the defense is so bad. But at the same time, he's probably not going to get thrown to a lot. Yeah, he's only had two system. games of double-digit targets. I mean, just... it's just—it's ugly. Yeah. yeah, you're hoping for a touchdown from him early. Same with Travis Kelsey uh, this week. So it's really kind of, this game. The Chiefs' offense is really hard to gauge this week because I mean. Somebody's gonna have to score on it, but you just right. I think the running backs only play a half have the most value in this game. With Sammy Watkins being questionable with a hamstring, I, I mean, if he's in, he'll probably get it. If if well, if he is he in, he'll probably get the man. the damn targets for some reason. But if he's not, then yeah, it's a shit show. Uh, we are We're talking about the Super Bowl the champion so Chiefs. You never one. talk too much about them, but go on. <laughs> The one in five Minnesota Vikings at the five and one Green Bay Packers, guys. Kirk, uh, the Vikings coming off there by Kirk Cousins, only three games with the twenty plus fantasy points this season. I don't want to play. What do you guys him. think about? Kirk yeah, I sit his ass Packers? on the bench. <laughs> Just cool. It's cool, eh? Uh, <laughs> hoping Dalvin Cook comes back. Obvious From start if he's healthy. Injury, he's limited on practice yeah, he was, I, I think I seen him. He was yep. uh, less yep. limited today in Thursday's practice as well. So he's trending towards playing. Do you think he's going to get a limited workload, or do you just think that they're going to? I don't. He's going to go back to his normal workload. Like is Alexander Mad? Any is Alexander Madison any flex sort of at best this week if Cook is risky in? flex because I think he'll get. Yeah, 10 carries, maybe. <laughs> I really, I mean, they're probably going to. It'll, yeah. it'll be interesting because if they're getting blown out, they're definitely not going to play Cook because then it'd just be pointless to waste or get him re-injured in a blowout. But if they're winning, I don't know. It's going to be, I don't know. It's going to be weird. He might th- not play that much. I think you know, even though they're coming off the bye, I still think they're going to limit his workload. They're. I can tell you right now, it might be a close game, but it's a better chance Green Bay Packers are going up big, uh, fast, just like they did the first time they met in week one. And like you said, there's no point risk, risking re-injuring your franchise guy. So. Especially a groin injury, man. Though, it, turn one way weird and you're it's re-injured. Let's talk about the wide receiver core for the Vikings now. Adam Thielen been pretty solid. Uh, unfortunately, who he actually torches by for some reason. Alexander. Yeah, he does. At in least, the first week, really. he went in the first off. week. Yes, in the first week. Oh, I'm I'm hoping this can be a better matchup. Jair is definitely <laughs> been hot, red hot lately. But it's going to be a fun matchup to yes, be watching, is. man. But uh, because of that matchup of Jair shadowing Thielen, I think Justin Jefferson is a. A, a high end wide receiver three this week, and you're you're starting oh, yeah, for sure. confidence because they're going to be down. Kirk's going to be throwing it. Is he? 
Do you guys think he's a must start every week now? Is he in that uh, consideration? Uh, I think so. Yes, you could. Yeah, yeah. I think he is too. Yeah, I think you plug him in as your. He's saying twenty percent team like target Marquise share, Brown. which is very good. So yeah, I would. Yeah. Yes, yeah, he's a start. I don't, I don't like starting rookies and saying they're must starts, but yeah, he's starting well, and he's got Adam Thielen on the opposite side taking the number one coverage every week. I love it. Yeah, but tight ends get the hell out of here. Agreed. I don't want anything to do with this. Um, jo- <laughs> I don't know, man. Irv Smith Jr. He's uh, finally more and more, more and more involved in the offense. Yeah, he's out targeted Rudolph eleven to eight since week four. I mean, it's not only eleven targets. He's but way more talented. It's something explosive, I should say, than Kyle Rudolph. Oh, definitely. Oh, yeah. Kyle Rudolph's getting up there. <laughs> definitely. But if you if you could avoid Star Nerve this week, I would. Just a streaming option. Um, Jesus, can I just over quick? the Packers. I looked at the red zone targets Aaron. for Minnesota. Obviously, yeah. Adam Thielen's leading it. <laughs> the next highest is Chad Beebe and Irv Smith and Justin <laughs> Jefferson and Kyle Rudolph all tied at two with Adam Thielen having eight. Chad Beebe. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. But jumping over to the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, obvious start. He's got four games with at least 20-plus. Last time he torched him. Four for 20. Smoke if you got it. Yep, I love it. Must start. Uh, Aaron Jones, guys, battling a calf injury. At first, it was only supposed to be very minor. But I, I still think it's minor, and I think the weekend. Packers are looking at this as a not-try-very-hard game, and they might just sit him again. Yeah, they play Thursday, if I'm not mistaken. So I think they want him for Thursday. And yeah. They play, you know who they play Thursday? And they're going to need him, the Niners. Yeah, they will need him. He might sit this game, yeah, which, which means Jamal put Jamal Williams, Williams in your lineup. Yeah, man. They... LaPlante ain't going to need him against the Niners. The Packers are going to have to throw the ball because they're going to be behind so much <laughs> against the Niners because the Niners are going to run it down their fucking throat. With what throat running like back? They do every none of them are healthy. They play each other. <laughs> do- doesn't matter. Uh... Jermichael Hasty, I don't give a shit. <laughs> But I agree, Jamal Williams, definite start if Jones is out. Don't even think about it. Don't even Devontae think I was live. 26 guys. targets so. in two weeks. The dude's an animal. It's wild. Uh, Marquez Valdez Scantling, I'm over him. <coughs> Might have been, he had a 96 yards and a touchdown in week one. He's super boomer bust. Them, so I mean, I you like you want to have a he, bust. He's so about 90% yeah. bust, 10% boom, because five out of six games are under 10 fantasy points. <laughs> and then the will your boy, Robert Tunyon. You bet your Dreamer bridges. This week, obviously, right? Only six targets last two games, man. Yeah, but 90% <laughs> percentage, man. Sure. Uh, he's Aaron. If there's anything Aaron Rodgers loves, it's a guy who doesn't drop his passes. Sure, sure. Yeah, go DJ Moore. Can he get you a point finally? Yeah, he did two points. Woo! He Let's made throw a move. parade. Uh, <laughs> that does it for that game. Jumping over to the next one, four and two Indianapolis Colts versus the three and three Detroit Lions. Please don't play him, guys. Old man Rivers. Just don't. Just the- <laughs> Less than twenty fantasy points at all, but if one you are game, playing him, and that was against Cincinnati, please, a- please just answer why, because I, I, I would love to know. <laughs> <laughs> hit up, hit Ike up. On yeah, Twitter. please. At Ike two one two one, let him know why you're starting Philip Rivers this week. <laughs> fucking plan move anything on. To add or, uh, just fucking move on. Please, I don't want to talk about old man Rivers anymore. <laughs> Old man Rivers. <laughs> All right. Well, what do you think about Jonathan? What do you guys think about Jonathan Taylor? He was hey, all three of us were down on him. So it's especially when I mean, we, yes, we, but the problem is, is we weren't pro him, at least me, because of Marlon Mack. Sure. And he went out in week two or whatever. But he's still not, 
he hasn't done what he was supposed to. That yeah, he's not getting the carries like he's supposed to. Less than twenty yeah, in not, the, less than twenty in four straight. Games, I don't guys. know what's they, going why on. Why aren't to be they honest. just grinding it out? Why does Frank Reich have this obsession <laughs> of chucking the ball with old man? I, <laughs> I will. I will. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'll over me. <laughs> I think uh, Frank Reich is. Uh, he he wanted to go into the bye week uh, with those weeks to get Jonathan Taylor Taylor acclimated to that NFL lifestyle. I think coming out of the bye week, he might see his snap percent going up a little bit more. I mean. He's had less than twenty carries in, in four straight games, but like they they I think they were using they were saving him for the playoffs, this playoff run, because they see themselves as a you know possible contender with this defense. For their one playoff game? They're gonna uh, save him for that one playoff game, huh? <laughs> hey. That's, that's all it takes in the NFL is one playoff game. Yeah, oh, man. Look at the Tennessee Titans last year. True. Yeah, yeah. you're starting, Josh. I'm telling you, uh, you you're starting. You, for some silly reason, you probably uh, wasted yep. a second, third round pick on him. Yeah, but you're, uh, <laughs> so you're, you're uh, probably uh, benching T.Y. Hilton this week, right? <laughs> How can you be benching him when he's on the waiver wire? <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> Please, I already told you guys. Only yeah. two games with 10 plus Stop. fantasy points Drop for it. wide receiver. That is dreadful. I mean, just. I mean, if you're. I'd rather have. If, you, if you're forced to use them, at least you're getting, you know, six targets a game. I mean, that's. It's not great, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> I'd rather have Marquez Valdez Scantling, who I just told you. I, I almost would rather have Zach Pascal. Pascal. <laughs> no part. Yeah, I agree. Snap percentage ninety in the past two games. He also has two <laughs> games with ten plus fans. How about voices. Marcus Johnson? Well, what thing. do you want him? Uh, I'm not too worried about it. <laughs> but <laughs> nah. The the one pass catcher I do want if you're hurting at tight end. The hell is that music? That was a phone up. Five hit. targets in three straight games since he uh since he came back from nice. Injury, Teddy's from re-entering injury. the game. He's been re-entered. <laughs> he already did. Yeah, he's we back. He's back. We probably should that to the podcast people, but. <laughs> Jumping over to the Lions, though. Matty Stafford. He's only had one game over 20-plus fantasy points, guys. I'd be uh, avoiding. Very tough matchup. Colts have the best yeah, defense don't, in football. Yeah, don't, don't You're don't probably start. not starting Adrian yeah. Peterson. Uh, and you're, Flex at best yeah, would be Swift, super risky. Yeah, you like to see he's he's getting five plus targets in three of his uh, last six games, so he's he's getting the passing work in this game, and they're probably going to be down. So he's got. I want him to get the ball more. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, it's right, rough during that Adrian Pearson. Write a strongly worded sticky. letter to uh, to fucking. Hey, what happened to Carry On Johnson? Huh. Uh, he went carry on my wayward son somewhere else. <laughs> How about Kenny Smooth G? Mm, love it. I love him. Six plus stars at every game. Double digit fantasy. Yeah, points start every him. Game he's played, guys. Yeah, he's and if you watched last week's game against week, the Falcons, that you know that last second touchdown by Hawkinson obviously won it them. It won the game for them, but Kenny Galladay got them down there. He made a couple of ridiculous catches in that game. Guys, he's he, – everyone already knows my man obsession. I know. It, it seems like so in past years Marvin Jones was this deep threat and then Kenny Galladay was this underneath threat. Now it seems like Kenny Galladay is just everything. He's he's taken that deep threat. And Marvin Jones is nothing. Yeah. What do you mean? Like, you didn't like <laughs> um, his usage after they wanted to uh, get him is, more involved last week? You, he, and just yeah, he's he done. hit that age thirty. He hit that age thirty milestone, milestone and then he hit that TJ Hawkinson wall. I mean, yeah, TJ Hawkinson's clearly the second option in this offense. Eleven targets in the last two games. This plus he's got two touchdowns. I Definitely. mean, ten plus fantasy points in every game, man. What'd you say? That magic number? Ten. Yeah. <laughs> the magic number. So I think. 
Hawkinson and Galladay are really the only starts on this team besides DeAndre Swift at a flex. But the next game, 3-3 three three, Las Vegas Raiders at the 5-2 and two, Cleveland Browns. Derek Carr, 20-plus fantasy points in three straight games. Kind of surprising. Um, Browns defense, top five. In yeah, points I would be. QBs. Did you know he leads the league in week? completion rating? Why am I not surprised? Yeah, I, I think no. it was like 71.5. I mean, I, I believe don't, it. Don't quote me on that, but I know for a fact. That's that weird to say when he's got Nelson Aguilar on the team. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. The Falcons are just beating up. Yeah, they, their D line don't get enough credit. Tonight. Grady Jarrett, really good. Yeah, and I only think well Tat McKinley's in. Michael Platt. Michael Platt, you are the Josh Jacobs truther on this podcast. A little. You worried but- about him at all. He's 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 inconsistent. I will give you that. He's he's not been very efficient. But granted, he has had some tough matchups last week against Tampa Bay. They're the number one run defense. I mean, you're basically hoping he fell into the end zone. Nice catch, DJ. Uh, what's his uh, what's his target? What's his targets looking like? Are they any better? Momento, literally, because here it is, Las Vegas. Wow, Dante Fowler Jr. is the one that's Teddy. actually playing really good for Atlanta. Dude's always in Teddy's face. Yeah, I mean, Josh Jacobs, he's been pretty consistent with his uh, target share. He's got no- around four or five, right? Yeah, or, yeah, he's averaging four targets a game. Uh, yeah, which you like. It's up from last year, but it's not as much as Gruden's been saying he's going to be involved. Jalen Rashard keeps eating into him on the passing game and. Majority of uh, both of the games that Josh Jacobs has had his multi-touchdown games have been in wins, so he's really been only producing in wins. So, I mean, if you can predict a good game script where you see the Vegas Raiders winning, I mean, he's going to have a good week. But if you think they're going to lose, uh, you're you're not happy. I'm thinking. Yeah. This might be good game script for him. I think, I think him and Derek Carr will be running for their honesty. lives from Miles Garrett. Yeah. <laughs> but jumping over the wider receivers, guys, Nelson Aguilar, <laughs> he apparently cured his dropsies. Uh, three straight games with 14-plus fantasy points and three straight games with a touchdown. Are you I'd guys be starting him this week. Guys, this is the one week I'd legit. be starting him for sure. If you have him on your team for some reason, this would be the week to start him. Yeah, he, he got nine targets last week. That was tied for first with Darren Waller, and you know how much Darren Waller is involved in this offense. He, he seems legit as long as uh, Byron Jones, Brian Edwards. I mean, I don't know Byron Jones, where that came from. Brian, <laughs> If Brian Edwards is uh, out with this injury like he's been you know, since the start of the season, we're starting Nelson Aguilar. I think even if he comes back, Nelson's done enough to sure, sure. keep his number two spot. I think like he Brian might even Edwards. be number one. Yeah, well, yep. he's got a bigger target share than Henry Ruggs, though. I would not be starting Henry Ruggs. Nah. Hunter know. would be risky. Or Hunter. No. Yes. Darren, Wall- Darren Waller is the pass catcher you for sure want to start in this. 26% target share. Yeah, but... Nine targets in a game. Nine Yeah, but what, Mike? What are you about to say? With, with the Browns D, no <laughs> allowing top five points allowed to QBs. Derek Carr's going to throw it to somebody else other than Darren Waller. No, he doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Darren Waller, we're going to have a good kid only 14 catches, 160 <laughs> yards, two touchdowns. <laughs> we're starting. <laughs> Jump, jumping over to the Browns, guys. Baker Mayfield coming off a five touchdown game against the Bengals. Uh, Las Vegas defense is um, bottom five in points allowed oh, he threw to a quarterbacks. Pick, Teddy. Did I read that? Teddy right? two gloves. Oh no, Teddy. Um, Me but too. I'm starting Baker against. The, I'm okay I'm starting not. Baker in. The I loss of the Odell, I think week. they're going to go more run heavy. I really do. 
They're even more run heavy. Well, they they already are run heavy, but like I said, I think the Raiders are going to win this game. So uh, Cleveland's going to be playing from behind. As I I like Jarvis Landry this week and Ike, we're uh, we're at this uh, game. Before, I totally you forgot about, about that. Before you uh, talk about him, we're we're definitely starting Kareem Hunt. I mean, there's there's no doubt with this defense. I mean, it allows. Oh yeah, yep. you're starting Kareem. Hunt. It, yeah, but go on with Rashard Higgins. But I'd I, I'd be going Juju over Higgins still. Well, Although you. Higgins has been okay, he's still worth like a flex okay. option for you guys. But ah oh, man, Juju's still in a better offense. I think. LaPlan, are you digging Landry this week like I am? Yeah, I, I don't th- – he got six targets last last week, which led the team along with Rashard Higgins. I just don't – I don't trust Baker yet. I know he had the five-touchdown game, but that was against Cincy. He always plays good against, good against Cincy. Actually, he really only plays good against Cincy. Yeah. It's gonna I be like dependent on Baker, but yeah, I mean, they, if they Baker can get it, can get it to him, hell yeah. And tight ends, Austin Hooper, doubtful with his appendix still. Guys, mm. Harrison Bryant caught two tu- two touchdowns last Touché. week. The tight ends accounted for three of them. <laughs> and Juke and Juco and and Joke and and Joke caught, caught uh, the other one. <laughs> but Harrison, here, come on, man. Uh, Harris the Bryant's, uh, if he's on your waiver wire and you're struggling at tight end, he's this is why this is also another reason why I'm not a huge fan of Jarvis opinion. Landry. Baker Mayfield is starting to show that tendency that he likes to throw it to the tight end a lot. But you know who is also used in the middle of the field as a slot receiver? And slot. Where is Jarvis with Landry Odell? With Odell Mike. in the lineup, he might line up. They might line up on the ground or not. You don't know that. You haven't seen No chance they're putting Higgins or Donovan Peoples Jones in the slot. They can barely move side to side. (laughs) LaPlante. Go ahead. If you say so, my friend. All right, next game we got the five and one Tennessee Titans at the one five and one Cincinnati Bengals. Um Ryan Tannehill. Last three games, uh twenty plus fantasy points in each game. He's had 10 total touchdowns in the last three games, uh, and the Bengals are the 10th worst in the league against QBs, allowing 20.3 points per game. Yes. Yeah. Did you hear that noise? <laughs> that yeah, it's, nice, with all those 20s, one. it's looking like he's guaranteed 20 <laughs> points this week, guys. Yeah. You you just saw fucking Baker torch the Cincinnati Bengals defense for five touchdowns. Yeah, this game has Tannehill's, sneaky shootout uh, potential, but uh, he does the same. Derrick Henry, what do you guys think about him this week? I mean, you're obviously starting him. He said twenty, you know, plus carries five out of the last six games. Basically, you can guarantee twenty carries and about fifteen fantasy points. So he's yeah. probably, he's probably got the highest floor out of any running back right now. No. Yeah, I mean he's not always efficient. I know, I know you're gonna say Kamara Ike. Uh, defense. <laughs> My he argument really is he is the highest ceiling. He is not the highest floor because he really doesn't get those rushing attempts. Latavius eats into those. Has Kamara been under ten he fantasy does. points? Yeah, that's why he's a high high ceiling. <laughs> Those point totals. Uh, never mind, just go. <laughs> I don't want to get into it. <laughs> AJ Brown, uh, he's just torching defenses this year. He, he takes seven yard slants that in the house fire, on, a, on a daily fire. basis. Three straight games, 20 plus points since he's been back in the lineup. He's been in my DFS lineup the last two weeks, guys, because he's been cheap. Uh, I'm curious to see if he's as cheap as he's been. Hopefully, he can. Make but the the shocking, again, you know, part of this offense is Corey awesome. Davis coming off that COVID uh, nineteen IR list last week. He said four out of four games with ten plus fantasy points. I mean, 
He's a solid wide receiver, wide receiver three, maybe a you know a decent flex play. What do you guys, especially against this Bengals team? Yeah, I would be playing him. The thing that worries me, guys, didn't Johnny only see one target or something last week? <sighs> Is hmm. that going to be? Like that all the time. Like is Corey? Did, is there? I guess I should be asking. Is there room for Ryan Tannehill to support? It's John New Corey Davis. John New got four targets last week. Uh, what play? What do you think? I don't have the receptions here. One reception. But he, he, he got four targets. AJ Brown had eight, and Corey Davis okay. had ten. It's it. Even when Corey Davis was in, John U saw eight targets. So this is kind of just a Ryan Tannehill looking to see who's open, and he's throwing it to the open guy type of offense. And I think Corey Davis just managed to get open against the Steelers. So it could go that way. But being in this matchup, I mean, either one is a decent play. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Are you Hell yeah. Are you still smashing the start button for John U or or no? That's a Even little sketchy, two, but I'm still rolling. Under five them. fantasy. Yeah, tight ends are crap in uh, four out of the last six games with ten plus fantasy points. What's that number? The golden number. The golden number ten. Ten to ten ten. Uh, Mike, I'm gonna stop you real quick. Pan- Teddy threw a pick uh, in the Panthers twenty five seventeen. Oh, what were they like on thirty or forty yard line? Michael Strahan and Tony Gonzalez picked the Falcons to win. Good calls, guys. Yeah. All right, we're going to move on to the next team. Uh, Joe Burrow uh, leading the helm for the Bengals. First in the league in completions with 195 through seven weeks. <laughs> he's, he's leading the league in passing target? attempts at 42 a, a game. That's just <laughs> asinine. He, said he, he has the most 300-yard passing games this year with five. That's ahead of Russell Wilson, who has four. I want everybody a part of this offense. Yeah, there's just, head there's just so much volume to be had in this offense. Uh, hmm. Well, when was the last time you say Carson Palmer? The uh, days of Ocho Bangles Cinco offense. and Hushman Zada. <laughs> but because of all this volume, uh, Joe makes it questionable with the foot again. He didn't practice Wednesday. I heard he didn't practice again uh, on Thursday. Yeah, it's not looking good, but we're playing Giovanni Bernard. We're throwing him in again. He, he, last week he had 13 rushes for only 37 yards. Not ideal, but he was a part of the passing game, just like Mixon was with five receptions for 59 yards, and he got a touchdown. He's a solid replacement. I mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're going to be playing from behind oh, the whole it's game. It's going to be a fun uh, game. Tennessee's better than them, so. He should catch. Yeah. He, he should catch. And because yes, it's possible shootout game, uh, we're starting Tyler we're Boyd. Starting we're starting T. Higgins. And, uh, I mean, we're a re- little reluctant, but we're starting A.J. Green. Yeah, I'd be starting them for sure. Put those in your That's lineups. That's all we got to say about that. No, it's your sample at all. Yeah, just a little tidbit just here. No I don't know sample. if you guys know how good of a Boyd uh, season Boyd's having, but he's actually tied in the league. Uh, third in the league with receptions with Stefan Diggs with 48 behind only Hopkins and Amari Cooper. But we're going to move on. Uh, That's nice. Yeah, that is. And then T Higgins is showing up, six, man. Seven, Last three games, 196 right there, so. yards, you know, with only 11 receptions. <laughs> <laughs> Insane. But we're going to move on to the next game, the two and four. New England Patriots. Yes, I repeat, the two and four New England Patriots at the five and two Buffalo Bills. Uh, Cam Newton, he's struggling, man. He's struggle town. Population, him, and possibly the rest of this offense. Uh, Literally, I don't want anyone a part of this offense. Him and, and Julian I don't Adam think Adam anybody should be starting together. anyone a part of this offense. If you're starting one person, I'd say it's James White. What do you guys say? Or, or Damian Harris, man, if you're struggling. Running back's a shit show, guys. So if you're scrapping for one, Damian Harris yeah, should see double-digit tu- uh, touches. Don't be surprised. You'd like to think. Don't, 
Yeah. Don't be so, surprised I mean, if uh, sexy Rexy Burkhead though, takes, <laughs> takes some of that volume uh, too. We never know cool what Bill Belichick's gonna do. Rex Don't Grossman. Sexy Rexy, that name is reserved for one <laughs> man and one man only. <laughs> <laughs> the plank, do me a favor and turn your um, yeah, figure it out, man. Phone. I'm tired of hearing that. Hey, I was getting updates on the Falcons game. Sue me. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no. Guys, you no, don't want – They're all yeah, limited at start practice. Start Nikhil Harry, concussion protocol, Edelman with a knee. I mean, they're down to Demir Bird and Jacoby Myers. We're avoiding all of them. And then, of course, the tight end, Ryan Izzo, you're avoiding him. So we're going to move on to the Bills. Uh, Josh Allen, he's a risky start this week against this Pats D. I mean, only allowing 19 points a game to QBs. Uh, top five in the league for least points allowed to QBs for fantasy. But – uh. With them possibly being up most of the game, Devin Singletary, is he a solid play this week? No part of him. Is I Zach wouldn't doubt it. Is gonna take yeah. over this Devin Singletary isn't looking that great. Over. Three straight games with less than 10 I, fantasy points. That's not good. No, he doesn't. He doesn't look good, guys. Yeah, if, if you you're running back him, desperate, I mean, sell. keep him, obviously, because there's not mm-hmm. a lot of starting running backs in the league. But you're not happy. I mean, he, the one bright side is he kind of is in, involved in this passing game. But uh, let's move on to the wide receivers then because I don't want to talk about those running backs anymore. It's not very fun. It kind of mm-hmm. killed, my, killed my mood. <laughs> so let's talk about the exciting Stefan Diggs. Wide receiver two, uh, eight-plus targets in three straight games. I mean, Five games with 15 plus fantasy points. Who saw this coming? Must start. I didn't see it coming. If you're thinking Boyd is a steal on sixth round, no. Same I don't with Diggs. Think anybody forecasted uh, this. Another steal in the in the draft this year. Uh, but John Brown, yep. oh, uh, yeah. questionable with a knee. He's looking like he's gonna play. Uh Thank you. I agree. This offense but, is just so much – runs so much smoother with Smokey in the lineup. I yeah, don't know what he, it is. You're tempering it's your expectations with him coming stretcher, off this injury. He's had three straight games under 10 fantasy points. He, he makes the offense better, but I don't know if he's a fantasy-relevant guy unless he hits that deep pass with Josh Allen. But uh, the surprise wide receiver – Three Bingo. in this offense because I didn't think this offense could support three wide receivers. Cole Beasley, he's possible flex territory this week. Would you agree? He's getting. I'd six- put him in the flex. Six yeah. targets in three straight games, You're eleven plus flex, fantasy points in every game, out. but his first week. That sounds like a really good floor. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually throwing him in the flex my for my team this yeah, week. Yeah, very solid. Fuck floor. it, why not? So let's move on to the next game. Uh, two and four Los, a- Los Angeles Chargers at the two and four Denver Broncos. Uh, Justin Herbert lighting it up. Last three games, 20 plus fantasy points, at least 260 passing yards in each of those games. And he's got 12 total touchdowns, 10 passing, and one rushing. I think we're starting him. He boosted the value of the receivers immensely. So I'm so glad they went with Herbert. I really am. Are you telling me you're glad that Tyrod Taylor got stabbed in the in the lungs? No. Yes. Oh, Whoever yeah. that doctor is, you might be the dumbest person alive, but uh, it's unfortunate, but a blessing kind of for the Chargers. Yes, us, I guess. Fantasy, us fantasy players, thank you, but we we wish the best for you, Tyrod. He's fine now, so I mean, hooray. That was, that was a very you know. <laughs> Impressive hooray there, Ike. Uh, <laughs> We're going to move on to the running back. So, Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson. This is a running back by committee, guys. Uh, Anthony Lynn does not know who he wants to play. So, <laughs> I'm avoiding both of them. Yeah, I'd avoid both. I like Justin Jackson better. I think he, if you're desperate, throw him in a flex spot. But nothing more than that. I think... Josh Kelly is really struggling, guys. I think mean, he's that averaging under three yards per carry since he's taken over yeah, for Austin Eckler. Not great for either. 
<laughs> yeah, not good. But uh, hey, they, yeah, they like Herbert's deep That's ball. Why I know I do. The ball around so much, probably. Uh, but talking about that deep ball, Keenan Allen, uh, who does what? not catch mm-hmm. the deep ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was transitioning into the Williams, wide receiver. Jaylen, kind of the ball, guys, but go on with your bad like self. that, wouldn't you? Uh, <laughs> you want to be transitioned? Transition this. <laughs> Transition me somewhere away from you guys. <laughs> uh, Keenan and Allen <laughs> out on eighty-one percent of team snaps. That's just stupid. He's second on the team behind only Herbert with that. He leads the league in team target percentage with twenty-nine point three percent. That's He's the most targeted player on any offense since Herbert became the quarterback. I think he's wide receiver one this year. You? What do you guys think? High end wide receiver two. No, not the wide receiver, wide receiver one. one. High end wide, wide receiver, receiver two. One. I don't think he busts in the top 12. 10, wherever your league is. 12. <laughs> All right. Well, I mean, with that target share being the way it is, are are we staying away from Mike Williams? uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'd be staying away from Mike Williams. Just when you think he's going to be good for the rest of the year after one game, he goes and is like, hey, let me catch like one or two balls for like 20 yards. Yeah, he is. He really is. Yeah. It's like he's Yeah, unless Keenan Allen's uh, out, I I say we avoid Mike Evans. And uh, (laughs) if, if you're desperate, Maybe try Jalen Guyton. Maybe he gets another long touchdown. Who knows? But uh, Hunter Henry, we're starting him this week. I mean, yeah, last two, uh, three games, yeah, uh, 10 fantasy points, but he's still getting seven targets a game, and that's nice. I mean, for he, he's involved in this offense, and you that's know what? That's nice. That's very nice. Nice. <laughs> With tight ends, I mean, seven targets a game. You can't deny that volume. It's just a matter if he can make do with that volume. But uh, I think that's enough about the Chargers. They're only two and four. Uh, same with this next team, Denver Broncos. Drew Locke. He's a risky streamer this week uh, because of bye weeks and whatnot. Uh, Chargers are top ten for points allowed to QBs, but they've had they've allowed no games over fifteen fantasy points. So you guys. Think it's the same? Don't want anything to do with him? That's fair. <laughs> don't want him. No, I'm not. You, sure. you don't trust Plus John he Elway. doesn't have Cortland's so son anymore. I, I don't want You don't trust either. John Elway's judgment. <laughs> no. All right, because the quarterback sucks on this offense. How about the running back? No, uh, I don't. Philip Lindsay, he's questionable this week. He's in the concussion protocol. I don't think he's going to be playing if he's got a concussion. I agree. Yeah, but if he's not healthy, he healthy. Uh, uh, Melvin Gordon, Gordon, like but... you guys said, he's a decent RB2 this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he's an RB2 because it's a shit show at the position. He gets a lot of touches. 10 to yeah, he's got 20 plus expect. touches in three out of the hopefully last five games. You like to see hopefully that. falls into the end zone. But, uh,. Let's move on to this uh, carousel yeah. of wide receivers that keep getting injured. Uh, Jerry Judy, the only one, that, the only one that can stay healthy. He is. Droppable. Unfortunately, he is <laughs> droppable. Two straight games under ten fantasy points, only two catches in three straight games. It's unfortunate. Yeah, even with Tim Patrick getting that hamstring injury, he still didn't see much targets. Bye bye. No offense, though. Uh, if he's healthy, we're playing him, I think. But it's I don't know if he's playing this week. He was limited at practice Wednesday. Uh, what do you guys think about him? I'd be starting him if he's healthy. If he play- yeah. Yep. If he's healthy, start him. He's uh, the best pass catcher that's available in that lineup, in my opinion. He's struggling. I mean, Jerry Judy is uh, – He's good. He's a great route runner, but he's just not. Yeah, and uh, I'll let Ike uh, pronounce this guy's his backup. Uh, what's his name, Ike, uh, if Noah Fant doesn't play? I'm pretty sure it's Akua Buenum, but uh, Albert Akua Buenum. <laughs> I, Albert O. Yeah, go with that. 
I think he's a, a decent Albert streaming no. option uh, this week if Noah Fant isn't in. What you guys seems that Joe Locke likes him a bit. For sure. Uh, he got seven targets last week. I mean, yeah. that was you tied with no fan. It's big balls. <laughs> but that's enough about that. So we'll move on to the next game. Big, Four and three, San balls. Francisco 49ers at the five and one Seattle Seahawks. Mm-hmm. This is it's another good, good game, game, guys. Yeah. Uh, because the Seattle Seahawks defense is so crap, allowing 27.8 <laughs> points to QBs. Let me uh, put that in perspective for you guys. That's seven more points than the league average. That's a whole touchdown and uh, some more yards. Like, that's insane. Because (laughs) it's a whole touchdown and some more yards, guys. (laughs) Hey, some some leagues are six points a touchdown, some are four. You you never know. But because of that, Jimmy G, he's the streamer material this week. You guys like that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I also think Brandon Ayuk is startable oh, this yeah. week too. I think he's gonna have his breakout game. You, you're telling me you're telling me last week his six receptions for 115 we'll yards agree. wasn't a breakout, we'll huh? Agree. He can get more of a breakout than that. Did he score? No. Okay. Well, maybe it'll be about eight for 120 and a touchdown. Uh-huh. It's breaking out. With Debo being out too, guys. Sure. He's going to be cheap. He's going to throw out uh, Kedrick Bourne. Only because the Seahawks are allowing 38 points a game to win. I say that's more than Dark. Who could have a big game, but to be honest, it could be Kittle getting about 15 to 20 targets. (laughs) Yeah. Even though he's so fun to watch. Even though Kittle's missed two games in this offense, he still leads his. The team and targets with 45 and receptions with 35. Yeah, he's having a fun year. The Joker, man, <laughs> he's wild. But now, we're, man. I mean, yeah, I mean, dart throws Kendrick Bourne, Brandon Ayuk's gonna be a you know, decent flex, maybe wide low end wide receiver three. They'll be cheap in DFS too. Yep, uh, just because of this matchup. So we're gonna move on to you know, the matchup, the Seattle Seahawks. I I know you guys like to call him Mr. Unlimited, but the way the way he's Mr. Just, Lem Cook, the way he's just rolling through teams, I'm gonna start Russ calling man. him Russ Bus. He's a must. <laughs> he's a must Russ start every bus. week. <laughs> <laughs> must start every week. Leads the league in touchdowns at 22, uh, and the Niners don't have Richard Sherman either. I mean. It like would have been the game week, winner if some dude that, didn't hold on to him. DK would have been praised still, again yeah, for his play, him. but no, that very next play <laughs> throws it to Isaiah Simmons. Speaking of uh, – Didn't see the tall 6'5 linebacker, I guess. Speaking of uh, DK, and we'll we'll get back to the running back in this offense, but we'll, we'll jump to the wide receivers real quick. DK and uh, Tyler Lockett, are you uh, skeptical on DK moving forward with this huge breakout game from Tyler Lockett, Ike? I said no, Ike, Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he he knows what I'm feeling. I know, yeah. He's still getting yeah, a 20 percent team target share, and you really <laughs> gonna bench the shredder? <laughs> <laughs> we got a new nickname for the that cat, shredder. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I I'd have to agree with you. You're not worried about him. I mean. It is insane that Lockett leads the team with receptions 45 compared to Metcalf's 20 because he had 15 in one game. Plus twenty targets, so I'm not. I'm, I'm, Fifteen catches. I will settle down. Okay. Stop hating on the lock. Fifteen man, catches man. is three times the amount of catches DK's had all year. Nice math, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Both top ten wide receivers yeah. guys yeah. this week. You're starting. tight ends aren't involved. This tight ends enough. We'll stay away so from much. it until they show more stay consistency. But we'll move on to our uh, next game: the four and two New Orleans Saints at the five and two suspect Chicago Bears. <laughs> you should have seen that coming. Drew Brees, though, this is a you decent defense in the Bears. Uh, <laughs> we're avoiding. Hey, be lucky! I gave you that. We're you allowing. Let, you, you let Jared Goff throw all over you. 
You let yeah, Jared Goff throw all over. We're allowing let's, let's, only let's 16 and a half points to quarterbacks this this year in fantasy. So do not start Drew Brees no, on this decent defense. <laughs> Alvin Kamara, because he's the best running back in football. Yeah, you know he should start because he's going to run all over him. Is Alvin yeah. Kamara though, and even let's say. Be- yeah, they're probably starting with Davis running back the game. The Bears aren't stopping a whole lot of people off the ground. Uh, they were shredded last week the against the Rams. What? Uh, we will talk about those pass catchers as soon as Let's you hear, get your cat to stop. Hear about purring. those pass catchers, the plant. <laughs> but uh, Michael Thomas, I thought that was the bubble machine. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Thomas, he's questionable. Uh, with a hamstring and an ankle injury. Uh, <laughs> I know that's insane. I and mean, he's pissing off teammates. So I'm surprised he doesn't have a hand injury after punching a teammate. <laughs> uh, but we're starting him, in, obviously, if he's playing. Uh, but if he's not, you got to pay attention to that, take him out. And b- if he doesn't play, are we, you know, avoiding Traquan Smith? Or is he, you know, a possible throw in there against this Bears defense? If you want a dart throw at flex, if you don't have any anybody, go for it. But I would not feel happy about it. Yeah, with Mark. I agree. Alvin yeah, with Kamara, I mean the breakout Jared guy Kamara last week was Marquez Callaway, but he's questionable this week with an ankle. He didn't practice on Wednesday. If he doesn't play, I I absolutely agree with you. It's a Jared Kirk week. Uh, we're we're starting him. He's got ten plus fantasy points in the last two games. I mean. And the Bears give up 13.8 points to tight end. It might be their worst position fantasy wise. So Bears are susceptible to tight end. Yeah, they're they can be beat over the middle of the field. Uh, those, those Roquan players. does not think sometimes. And uh, Danny Trevathan is too slow. <laughs> <laughs> but so we're starting Kamara and Cook and Thomas if he is healthy. Sure. Yep. So moving on to this porous uh, offense. Jesus, man. So, <laughs> come on, you guys are giving me shit after the Packers lost to Tampa Bay last week. I can't give me a hey, whoa, 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 whoa. They didn't just lose, they got decimated. Okay, the real number 12 goat Tom Brady showed them what's up. Okay, uh, and you wonder what you wonder, you wonder why I'm going hard. I, uh, all right, let's. All right, on to this defense that is called uh, – defense. This offense that is called the Chicago Bears. Nick Foles, he's not looking that great. We're fading him until we see more from him, and he might not have – It's like I'm watching Mitch Trubisky out there again. You sure it's not him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mitch would have been running away from the defenders. Yeah, the dirt- – <laughs> Not just standing there getting plastered over. I just, over. I just want to add in Let's the differences. Nick Foles <laughs> throws it deep and gets sacked. Mitch Trubisky <laughs> runs from the defenders and throws it in the ground. That's all I got to say. You know what? The, <laughs> Fair you know what enough. The but is there. Yeah, Nick throws it deep. I'm going to go with what you said. We're going to move on. Either. So, so <laughs> David uh, Montgomery uh, <laughs> for this offense. I, I know it's not. We mentioned it earlier. It's not sexy, but he's risky running back to, you know, decent flex with the amount of volume he's seeing. But yeah. the Saints, D only allows 20.8 points to running backs. They're top 10 in the league. Uh, if, you, if you're playing him, you're hoping he gets those five receptions he's been getting. He's guaranteed those. Yeah. Yep, and like I said, it, you end, know, they so. might not have yeah, Allen Robinson this Bears week. I don't think he'll play because concussion, obviously. Yeah, he took a hard hit. He's you're in, starting him if he does. If, if you start him, you know, you're tempering your expectations, just coming off that injury, uh, and you're playing, you know, the Saints. But, yeah, uh, Darnell Mooney, you like him as a flex this week if Robinson's out? Yeah, he'll see more for sure. And then yeah. we are avoiding Anthony Miller like Matt Nagy is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And apparently Marshawn Lattimore can't guard anybody anymore, so Mooney might uh, make yeah, you're him just look like a fool Nick a Foles times, can hit him like on deep pass. He, you know, he... Jalen Ramsey not look very good. I did see it. A few times. Yep. 
Did you guys yeah. see the double move he put on Jalen Ramsey? Arguably. It, completely it's not the fastest, him. though. Uh, and that's the moving best on to the tight end football. on this offense, Jimmy Graham. Uh, <laughs> I like Cole commit more. Start him. Uh, I'm sick of him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, guys. <laughs> oh, man. You're uh, starting Jimmy Graham, obviously. Yeah, you are. I mean, he's <laughs> oh, had man. a rough go at it. Last two games under 10 fantasy points, but. He's just targeted in this offense with Nick Foles. I don't understand it. He's old. He don't move that well, but he also gets red zone targets. So you're playing him reluctantly. So let's move on to our Sunday night football matchup. Uh, it's not much of a matchup. We got Why the two is this on Sunday night football? Uh, yeah, I wish they would flex it. We got the two and five Dallas Cowboys at the two, four and one Philadelphia Eagles. This is for a division, guys. Division lead right here. Is it really? <laughs> ben Denucci. Ben Denucci. Do not start. From Italy. Sounds like a. Uh, a he's to me. Doctor. Ben Denucci. Yeah. The only difference ben between him and a doctor is he won't be able to dissect anything. <laughs> the, this yeah, is, I, guys. The Zeke is still startable. That's uh, course. Really uh, irrelevant all of a sudden. You're, but you're, you're super scared about it because yeah. these some alarming stats right here. Ten fantasy points or less in two straight games. Hasn't carried the ball more than 20 times since week two. Like, <laughs> But uh, it's like, Tony Pollard, he might points, be a risky flex then if, if Zeke you know, keeps mm-hmm. fumbling and such and whatnot. No, he's not. If no. he's not worth what he used to be, Tony Pollard's not worth it either. This offensive line is so porous. There's going to be eight men in the box all the time. I uh, hate that. We talk about struggling. We're going to talk about the struggling the Amari year, Cooper with his bad quarterback is, play. Uh, he was wide receiver one with Dak Prescott, uh, but now he's more you know, hanging on to that wide receiver two title. I would still be starting him the only one out of the pass catchers, to be honest. He still seems to be getting his targets. 15-plus fantasy points in all but one game. Uh, yeah. I don't know, I'm yeah, you start him, but you're not either. happy. You're just hoping Ben DiNucci hits, hits him for, a, you know, a, a shit ton amount of targets. Drop Michael Gallup. I, please, I don't know why. I don't even know why he's on my roster. <laughs> and then I just have nobody else to pick up. If I'm being honest, I'm probably benching CD Lamb until yeah he, until yep, he yep. Can show more. Productive. If you have nobody else, he's definitely a risky flex. Uh, he's got, I mean, you know, he's got the speed to take it to the house. It's just a matter of Ben DiNucci can get it to him. And then another fade in this offense, Dalton Schultz. After he was showing promise with Prescott, he, you just can't trust it. He hasn't gone over ten plus fantasy points since week four. Uh, and that's I all. That's all I got to say about that. Uh, on to the Eagles, the possible division leaders after this game. Carson Wentz, we're starting him against this Cowboys defense. They give up 21 points a game to the QBs, and uh, he's had 20-plus f- fantasy points in five straight games now. I mean, Yeah, he's been really good lately, actually. He's been kind of carrying this team. And. And then yeah, uh, should be Miles Sander, he should be Sanders. Stud. He's questionable Firing with his knee. With he no missed worries. Wednesday's practice. Wednesday's practice. Obviously, if he's healthy, this is the best matchup he's going to get all year. Even if he's injured, I think he's going to go off. I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, but if he is injured, injured we're starting Boston they Scott. Don't need I mean, it. They should he, win this game by wasn't bad points. last week against the Giants. He's running back to flex territory if he's if Sanders is out. He got 10-plus carries. He was 70% of the snap share. I mean, you guys like that? Yeah, Sanders has to be out for him to start. Uh, on to yeah, uh, the definitely. wide receivers. Uh, Travis Fulgram. Yep. He is the – yeah, he's 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 been killing it since uh, he's taken Love the, the wide receiver one role. 
He's he's torched defenses like unfortunately, the unfortunately Alshon might be back this week, right? He's questionable. Uh, he he has returned. They're all coming back. Doesn't hmm. matter. Jalen Rager is back. They said. Honestly, it doesn't matter. I still think Fulgham. Yeah, Fulgham might be the best. Yeah, Jalen Rager. He's, he's no, the number one he's until uh, week, like, these guys show, notice, that, yeah. show that they can stay healthy. But the surprise in this offense, because apparently Carson Wentz is a tight end guy, if we didn't know this already with Zach Ertz. Richard Rodgers, we're starting him against yep. a great matchup. Defense for the Cowboys gives up 14 points per game to tight ends, and he got eight targets last week. No brainer there, honestly. It's not pretty, but we're doing it. Turn really it. devalues Zach Ertz. <laughs> like, I mean, if any tight end can do this, a why you, bit, why would you pay Zach Ertz? A little bit of Dallas Goddard, too. Yeah. So... We're going to move on to at least one good team playing in the Monday night football game. Uh, the 5-2 and two Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the 1-6 and six New York Giants. This is going to be a shit show, guys. <laughs> uh, Tom Brady, he's a low-end QB1, 40-plus uh, pass attempts in three out of the last four games. Uh, I don't see that happening this week with the Giants. It seems like they're going to be up by a lot quick. But uh, the one thing you like is five out of the last seven games with multi-touchdown, you know, four games over 20 fantasy points. But the Giants are – Giants allow 21 fantasy points, you know, per game to the QBs. It's just I think that they're going to run the ball down the Giants' throats. What do you guys think? The Giants are Tom Brady's kryptonite, man. <laughs> <laughs> Start him if it... – Yeah, you are, yeah. for sure. No brainer. That's uh, but like I was saying, yeah, like I think they're gonna run all over this defense. This who do, who are we starting this week? <laughs> Ronald Jones or not? I mean, if you had to pick one, gun to your head, who you? Who I you hate it. Who knows? Ike. Uh, probably Rojo. Rojo, because he's better. Uh. He's better. <laughs> I wanted to hear his thoughts, but go on. Uh, I both, I don't like them both. All right, move on, Mike. One little you know, <laughs> tidbit of information. Last week, I don't know if it was just you know, you know, know, running back by committee, but uh, Fournette was on 55% of the snap share compared to Ronald Jones only 44%. I don't know if that's a big deal, but it's something. You know, take it note. So we'll move on to the wide receivers. Uh, Mike Evans. Wide receiver three? Wide receiver he two? Is so frustrating. Flex play? <laughs> last week, uh, this is the last week that you can start him comfortably with Chris Godwin being out with his fractured finger, but it's still not a great matchup. I've said it before. I'll say it again. James Brandt He's only is, had seven uh, points but doing combined a pretty good job in the last two weeks. <laughs> slowing down. A yeah, the one bright side you're once. looking at it, uh, with Mike Evans, though, is Arians has been moving him <laughs> into the slot, so they might be able to work him away from Bradbury. But with Chris Godwin out, Scotty yeah, Miller, he might yeah. be a sneaky flex play yeah. this week. I mean, he saw nine Miller targets last well. week, and he made them count. Or is he gonna is he gonna bust again now that we think he's good? It's his last week to show off. I like. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Before uh, Antonio Brown gets there, leads yeah. team in targets. I like since week five. The other pass catcher this week. He's looking yeah, he, better and better. I'm I'm actually shocked, but yeah, Gronk's a, he's start worthy now. He's had 15 plus fantasy points the last two games, and that's five more points than the magic number. We're we're putting him in this week. Gronk is back. Cool. Quick. Daniel Jones. Let's talk about this We're fading him. Tampa yep. Bay defense is. He has turned the ball over in every game. Every game. Yeah. I want one guy and one guy. Well, no, I want two guys. This offense, Sterling Shepard. Yeah, with Slayton, I'd be benching. He's only got seven targets the last two and games. Plus, really this defense is pretty tough. 
Sterling Shepard, I, I have a feeling he can sneak into the end zone. He might get Danny Jones' one touchdown throw. I don't want anything to do with Evan Ingram. He pisses me off. He can't catch the ball. And De- Devontae. Yeah, he does. Stone hands. He <laughs> needs- and we kind of skipped Evan over uh, Devontae Freeman the there. I know I know this is a solid Giants. Tampa Bay defense, but running backs are hard to come by. He's questionable with an ankle. He he didn't participate in Wednesday's practice. Uh, you're playing him just because he can get the five, six receptions because they're going to be down in this game. And he's, But if you're not playing him, would you like Wayne Gallman maybe? No. Not even with those five receptions he's going to get? Tampa Bay is really good against no. running backs. I would I would avoid it. Fair enough. I would have to agree with you. I just was curious <laughs> about you guys' opinions on that. But uh, that pretty much uh, wraps up our game pre- previews then. <laughs> oh, nice. Uh, but, guys, thanks for listening. Uh, please subscribe to the Fantasy Six Pack YouTube <laughs> channel where you can find this podcast, obviously, and all the other great podcasts we have. Uh, please follow me on Twitter at dclemens2222. The least useful one out of the three. Tight end streaming article that I did on the site. <laughs> Still a good article, though. Appreciate that, he says. Appreciate that. You can find me at, on my Twitter at Ike Tell everyone where we can find the your, your work article. so we can wrap this up. Check it out. <laughs> Check it out. Especially this year with all these damn injuries. Yeah, every week it's the a major injury, The most important injury, one out of the three. Or maybe one week we haven't had one. But uh, you can find me at Twitter at, at be like underscore Mike with two eyes, And uh, I, w- I write the weekly trend article every week. It comes out Monday. Find some interesting things in there if you if you're as interested in I am to see what's going on. Give it a give it a whirl.